Welcome in, somewhere between the sacred silence and sleep, there's us, the Polymuse Podcast. I'm Michael, and this is the Cuz. How's it going, guys? Welcome to Polymuse. This is the show where we do System of a Down. We do every single one of their songs. We're doing every artist that changed our lives. My name's Ben, and we're going to take you through a musical experience today here on the podcast, folks. Today we are tackling toxicity. Yes, we are tackling it. Yes, we are reviewing it. We will be playing the song on the podcast. We will be reveling in one of the greatest System of a Down songs that was ever written by the System bestest. of a Down. Absolutely. Number seven on the Billboard Top 100. No, 70. Sorry, on the Billboard Top 100. But number three on the Main String Rock chart was as high as this has gone. And it is a fantastic track. I think that we enjoyed quite a bit. One of the first tracks that we had when we were coming along, coming up, we had it right around the time that it was actually released, even though we were young little minions at the time. Did we have this one? I don't specifically remember it, I guess. Maybe we did. I remember Bounce. <laughs> I remember Shimmy. I remember War Science. For a, man, we must have had this one as well. There were yeah. some we were missing. We knew this one from the radio. We knew this one from the album. I certainly remember this song. Certainly remembering listening to all of it and uh, the music video as well. Directed by Darren. One of a few for this album directed by Darren. You were not a fan of the I music was not video. a fan at all of the music video. <laughs> kind of like white walls type of situation we got going on with the music video. Just the band playing in the middle of nowhere. And then it opens up to a, a crowd later on. Yeah, when it gets to the fast, awesome part, yeah. they, they start out a mosh pit erupts and kind of brings a little bit of action to the they're eating seeds it's a pastime activity yes <laughs> so but it, it goes from chill to exciting basically and as you said though the video could have been made for any song of theirs and it would have been well, it's a song that's arguably about adhd eating seeds is taking drugs or popping pills that's the reference eyes of a tire hub which could reference to the world always spinning or moving by and we have a lot of our typical system of a down elements here of questioning large powers government business conflict veiled in their kind of lyrical content here sacred silence could be death or fog between taking pills or ignorance of others so there's a lot of different elements here that could be open for interpretation. Yeah, they really wrote a lot of words for this one. It's not one of the kind of repetitive chanting system of a down songs, but it's equally catchy. Like the guitar riff pulls you right in. The drums are just snappy. The drummer sounds amazing. The riff of the drums is just the rolls he does, all of it. It just pulls you right in. It hits you upside the head. You can't turn away from this type of music. It just grabs you, and they write that visceral of music, but it's one of those ones where they actually wrote good lyrics and deep. It's detailed as well as being like a hit. Yeah, it is. It's enjoyable. This is something that could have had a great music video for starters, but we get some vocal ranges from Surge here, some chanting, some very cadence hits at times, and it's just very frantic sometimes and sometimes very paced and we just get just a kind of firestorm mix of mix of elements here from system of a down that makes it a very system of a downy song i guess kind of chaotic but kind of organized chaos and how it's performed and it's just very enjoyable the drum sounds so crispy it is it's organized chaos it's they're keeping it on the rails but it's as far to the edge as they can go it's like the edgiest nastiest sounds but then they're so musical about their approach and just keeping it within those boundaries it's a perfect ex it is a perfect example of I would think this is like new classic rock is what you should call it. You know, I yeah. know it was alternative at the time. Right. It was alternative to, you know, the mainstream. It's not mainstream, but it's classic. Yeah. And it will withstand the test of time. You put this up against other classic rock. It's in that canon of just amazing kind modern of modern classics, modern classic. But it's just one of those songs. It just has those the distinct pieces there's the chill verses and the intense choruses which they always do but then the bridge is like a totally different riff that's also catchy yeah with no word that that little dun da 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 down they right. don't sing to it till the very very end it's not really a mismatch song because they flow well into each other but it's like three distinct pieces yes 
I keep thinking of like Bohemian Rhapsody or something. It's <laughs> yeah. not quite that operatic. Obviously, that's you know, it's not in the same realm as that. But yeah. it it might be systems Bohemian Rhapsody. Just Maybe in terms of it's either this or Chop Suey, where you've got the different kind Certainly. of characters singing, the different moods just taking you through like an entire arc i don't it's not like a story and i feel like neither is bohemian rhapsody it's just a bunch of crazy words mashed together that kind of takes you on a emotional yeah and it it just means what it means like it is what it is it's i know they had a deeper meaning to it (laughs) yeah but toxicity itself like is it means what it means it's like you know it has this deeper meaning but it's just such a good piece of art that you look it's like the mona lisa something like that where it maybe it means something deeper but just the face value of it is like so perfect and so entertaining and so enjoyable that it's like just musically a classic Serge has often said that during the live performance, it's hard for him because he has to stop and listen to see where they're at in the track to kind of keep pace. So they kind of use head nods to kind of acknowledge where they're at in the song. It just so, kind of stops and starts. Yeah. yeah. it's It would be hard to play that. <laughs> it was in uh, Rock Band 2008. It was also in Guitar Hero Metallica 2009. So we have our video game tracks here again. Lots of tracks and video games for this album, apparently. Lots of video gameable tracks. That makes Did you listen sense. to this one and repeat for any video games? No, I don't think it was in Tony Hawk. It might have <laughs> no. been in something. Just the, just the rock bands, yeah. That was the era for it, though. It was kind of where metal was still extreme, cutting edge. You put it up with extreme sports, the coolest, most violent you know, games, whatever it is. Makes sense that it would be. It's edgy, and I don't know if we quite have that same. We are edgy in different ways now yeah. with our entertainment. It's not the same as it was at the, in the 2000s. I'm trying to remember if I played this in rock band or not. It seems like it'd be difficult in sections to play (laughs) the drums dude you'd have to learn how to play the drums yeah i never really played those games i was playing real instruments at the time (laughs) that's kind of the thing but i was was mad it was when i was in high school making bands and everyone was playing plastic guitars and making (laughs) you know yeah i like those games because they kept classic rock alive for another generation like there's a lot of those songs that people would have never heard if they hadn't played those games which it's a shame not you know i guess it's up to the video games to to teach the next generation the last generation's music but i didn't really dig them and they fell off hard i mean that was it was a fad it was like ddr but you played with your hands it was not particularly (laughs) similar to performing music necessarily i mean maybe the drums but even that is like uh i don't know they made games after that i guess where there's like a real guitar that you can control some kind of digital guitar hybrid game that they do have now or i don't know man where it's, it's oh, strings yeah. but you're still like beat matching and interesting you i have to know. restring your instrument mm, if you break I, one like <laughs> yeah, i don't know is there tuning yeah there's I probably gotcha. tuning <laughs> that's they should really t- in-depth uh teaching you how to play like a real instrument. yeah a real guitar hero <laughs> has someone tune his guitar for him so <laughs> taught you how to be you know, a rock god, you don't need a guitar tech, you don't need... Those games are goofballs. The arcade one is funny. You can walk up to those arcade ones still and see them and get some different music going. Yeah. If you see that, they sometimes you'll see it in a bar and can switch. Oh, there's metal music, there's rock music coming from the, the Guitar Hero video game. <laughs> it makes it even more of a time cat. It'll come back. Rock, metal will all come back. Not in this way. They are an anomaly. As far as how weird they were and how political they were and how creepy they were in the ma- maybe it'll come back. There are creepos in the mainstream. I mean, you know, we, we've got goth influences. We've got Lady Gaga does a lot of creepy stuff. Billie Eilish is a creepy creepo, but it's not this type of edginess. It's different. It's restrained. It's fake. It's a fake edginess. Yeah. To compared to what these guys are talking about. Yeah. It's like a perf- this is not uh it's not a fake performance. It's really who they are. It's a performance, but they're performing exactly the truth of what the sounds that they're supposed to make. Let's give it a spin. Here's Toxicity. Dude, that's a great song. That's an easy S-tier song. I give it an S 
It deserves the ass. Every riff is great and they all, it's perfect. I never want to not be able to listen to the song. I have to have it on my Desert Island mixtape. Yeah, I gave it an S as well. Again, right. just a widely revered track on the discography. Easily. Charted well. Fans identify with it. It's got the, uh, you know, of course, the album cover. The album is called Toxicity, and it's it's for such a bland cover, it's very identifiable with just the dirt and the side of the Hollywood kind of mountain, but it says Toxicity in the letters instead. So yes, easy S's, I think, for both of us here for Toxicity on the album Toxicity. So let's tackle other music releases here in 2001. Big year for music, all right? I'm going to start running through some stuff. You stop me when you want to tackle some sure. of these top hits, okay? Let's do it. Nostalgia. What year are we doing? 2001. Oh, good year. Good year. Train dro- Drops of Jupiter came out. <laughs> Okay, starting off small. I just remember that being a default on, I don't know if it was an MP3 player or maybe the desktop computer I got at the time or something. It was a just, I had one song sitting in one of my media players and it was Drops of Jupiter by Train. And of course, that's that was a huge song then. It was a huge song for many years <laughs> afterwards. Just ridiculous. A Life House Hanging by a Moment was a big song. Alicia Keys Fallen. All right, Aaliyah released her third self-titled album. Five weeks later, we tragically lost her in a plane crash, but Aaliyah was still, of course, big at that time. Your big group, Gorillaz, yeah. released their debut self-titled album. Wow. I know they're a huge group for you. Definitely. That puts that in perspective a little bit for me. I remember I was so young and naive when that came out. I wanted it. It had cartoon characters on it. Yeah. And it had a parental advisor sticker on it, and yep. it was just problem for me at the time so that's how young i was i got a hold of it i don't know clint eastwood was on the radio that's a terrific album (laughs) i like every album that gorillas made but i think that every album they made after that is not as good every album they make is like more specific and more refined and more like narrowed in on a specific sound and they spend a lot more time and energy on all their newer stuff but i love their first album because it just throws everything at the wall and so that's that was huge. That's like a new way of making music almost when that Gorillaz album drops. That, they're a really unique kind of art collective. Yeah, I certainly remember their singles coming out and I was like, who is this? What is this group here? And of course, their, even their album, that first album cover was on t-shirts and was very memorable and something that you could portray on other you know, aspects as well, whether it's a stickers for your laptop or t-shirts or hats. It was just a very memorable cover. But Gorillaz came out, Dream Street, their self-debuted album, Drowning Pool, released their debut album, Sinner Bodies. Their hit song was pulled from the radio post 9-11, but they still had much success, of course. In Sync, our big pop group, released Celebrity, <laughs> their album. <laughs> Is that their most memorable one? I don't <laughs> I think No Strings Attached is yeah, still most memorable. That was earlier, right? Yeah. Yeah. I believe that was the last. Was that the last one they released? I still listen to the Christmas album every year, but <laughs> I think Celebrity was the last one that they released as a collective. Uh, Britney Spears released her third album, Britney. Michael Jackson released his 10th t- album, Invincible. That was his first release since 95, so that was a big Michael Jackson year as well. Kids Bop dropped their first CD with 40 tracks on it. Wow. Was the system of a down on there? <laughs> don't, I don't think so. I'm not sure it was on that original track list. I didn't have that pulled up. But yeah, 40 songs for Kids Bop for that debut, which is, of course, dropped multiple, multiple CDs every single year now and has its own station on Sirius XM Radio. Do they? Yeah, I stop by that every time I'm rolling through stations just to see what song they're covering. What, they're bopping today? Yeah, because sometimes they do a really great job. Kids Bop wants all-star cast here. It starts with All-Star by by uh, Smash oh, Mouth. yeah! They got multiple Britney, Backstreet, Insane. <laughs> yes! All the small things. Living La Vida Loca, Blue Dabba D, my oh, favorite song of all yes. time. <laughs> yes. Not probably not the kids pop for oh I gotta find that I have a playlist on Spotify separate from this of all the official remixes of Blue Dabba D which is quite <laughs> twenty two and counting but I don't have oh, kids pop on there. Well, Eiffel sixty five did drop their second album two thousand one as well, but of course the I Am Blue from the first album yeah. was the only one that really from the Euro Pop yeah album that, that was the only one that really slapped there. Summer Girls. Great song. Mm-hmm. Hot Dad has a good cover of that. Minor key cover of Summer Girls. That's a good way to one week. Bare Naked Ladies. This is a, it's reminded me of uh, the Digimon soundtrack. Oh. There's a lot of good music on there, too. Yeah. You got Bare Naked Ladies. You got like 
weirder kind of pop punk covers yes. and some stuff. That's a good era. That was a lot of it, I it's strange because it was like kind of a last blast for a lot of these bands that use, you know, real instruments. Like, but it was also <laughs> when you go back to that Backstreet Boys stuff, it sounds great. Like the synths and the drums and everything. It sounds so modern. Like yeah. it, you can go back and it doesn't sound 20 years old. Like it sounds like the records that are on the radio now. Yes. So it's weird that they, they kind of converged basically where pop kind of became like they perfected pop and then there was a last kind of last rebellious little it is back now i feel like in 2022 <laughs> we do have some pop punk again yeah. back in the the mainstream i think so i just saw backstreet boys a few weeks ago on one of their reunion tours in real life yeah you went and saw them yeah i was what? supposed to see them a couple of years ago the tour kept getting pushed was it good it was it was pretty good i had a few adult soda pops so did they parts of it were fuzzy have a band <laughs> no just the five of them dancing popping up oh, okay we had lights we had action it was good they're solid they still sound like backstreet boys do they dance to they every do. song they still dance so i imagine they still have to do stretches and pilates and stuff to keep yeah. you know keep those slightly older bones going you know but yeah good old backstreet boys solid tupac's until the end of time his third posthumous uh album came out as well and let me hit some of the real bangers here some 41's all killer no filler I and it was a big fan of that it was there was no filler Mm-mm. <laughs> except for the intro track and the outro track but other than that <laughs> yeah, it was not filler at all Mm-mm. tools a lateral lateralist yeah that's how you pronounce it i've never said it out loud there we go stains break the cycle a big, big album for me. That was, I think, the first album I ever had with an explicit sticker on it. Nice. Love Stained. Blink-182, Take Off Your Pants and Jacket. Good album. Little John and the East Side Boys, Put Your Hood Up. That's more for me. I own that album. Usher 8701. D12's Devil's Night, of course. Very Eminem's cool. group there. Michelle Branch, The Spirit Room. Slipknot, Iowa. And Pink's Misunderstood. Great collection of albums there. Mariah Carey's Lover Boy was actually the best selling song of 2001. That was the height of Mariah Carey and her vocal abilities there. So lots of big albums in 2001. It's a heck of a year. Yeah. How'd they do all that in one year? I don't know. You could just make a best of 2001 playlist. It's Kids Bop 1. Just get Kids Bop 1. <laughs> yeah. It might be. If it's on Spotify, I'm dropping it in the episode. Did okay. System of a Down ever make it to Kids Bop? There's no way, right? What song would it be? Bounce? The Kids Bop version Bounce? <laughs> yeah, it doesn't look like they're there. I googled Kids Bop System of a Down and I got a post. It's 15 months too old to be listening to System of a Down. <laughs> <laughs> I bet you they do have that uh, the lullaby core version of it, though. They make those like um, like lullaby albums where it's like xylophone music and like it's, oh. but it's like Metallica songs and stuff. I've not, I've but got the play it, it sounds like it is going to put a baby to sleep, but oh, you listen really? to the notes and you're like, wait a minute, <laughs> like that's Metallica. I've got, you know, the punk turned pop and pop turned punk and all the other mixes. I've not heard that alliteration of musical interpretation, though. I'll have to look those up. We'll give it a yeah, rip. We'll, we'll review it, it. <laughs> okay. on our Lullaby Renditions <laughs> podcast. This is wild. It's toxicity for babies. Oh my god, this is this is wild. Isn't that weird? They've done like every famous metal album. Like everybody. This is how you get your kids into it. I guess. <laughs> it's weird. It's not the same thing. So toxicity, S is from us, 2001 was a yeah. great year for music. And here's the alternative to everything we just mentioned. It's yeah. System of a Down. It's we like the polished pop stuff. We like the insane off the wall alternative stuff it was just a great year it was the year where those things converged in front of our eyes on the same stage at the same time type of thing and viva 2001 apparently and that was a long time ago now but it feels like it was yesterday next time we will cover psycho on the polydeus podcast yeah check us out we got lots more system of it now coming up